I diagnosed this a couple of weeks ago as a bad TXV that is shut and will not open. And the reason I came to that diagnosis is you can see our super, our sub cooling is extremely high at 27 degrees and our head pressure is high. So it's overcharged. They were trying to get that suction pressure to go up and it would not go up because the TXV is not opening. And you can see our superheat is very high, which is another indicator of our TXV not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And this unit will eventually keep freezing up and not cooling well. So today we're gonna swap out that this TXV and check our readings after and do a before and after. Let's jump right in. I've got my gauges hooked up to the system. I've got the caps off of the service ports. I'm gonna pump this system down. And to do that, I'm first gonna close fully all the way down on this liquid line service valve. All right, that's closed all the way. I'm gonna make sure that this one will even turn before I go ahead and trap all the refrigerant inside the condenser coil and compressor. Okay, this one is stripped out, which I thought might happen. So I'm gonna have to recover all this refrigerant. All right, we've got our recovery machine going. There's my workstation. And this is how far I gotta walk to get to the stairs. Gotta love rooftop work. Here is our TXV, and this is probably the most accessible TXV I've ever done in my life. Very cool. This bulb's nice and loose, but that's not our, that wasn't our issue. One thing, I don't know if you can reach it or not. If not, I can get it. That disconnect switch. Yeah. Sweet. Pretty sure that's off, but it's hard to tell right now. Do our old equalizing tube, equalizing line. All right, slide our new Teflon O ring over, and this one. Our new TXV has another new Teflon O-ring. We've got some play in the line, just gotta make up a little bit of a bend.
Okay, everything's tight. Now I'm gonna run upstairs and nitrogen pressure test it. We'll hit all these joints up with soap bubbles. We're almost at 200 PSI and he said there's no soap bubbles. Let's go down and wrap up down there. Then we can come back up here, remove this liquid line filter dryer and then evacuate the system. We've got our bulb mounted right about two o'clock. There we go. Now it's two o'clock. And then we've soap bubbled all our joints. Not seeing any dancing bubbles. So I just need to wrap this bulb up and insulate it. All right, got that all wrapped up. And for now we're done down here. I'm gonna let out all the nitrogen. I have to remove this liquid line dryer that they butted right up to the service port. And I've cut these out before and tried to re-sweat them on and the Silphos won't stick because it's only copper plated. So I am going to unsweat it and try it that way. And then we're gonna flow some nitrogen through while I'm doing this. And we're just gonna set that to break. Read my mind. I've been working together for a while. Right? Yeah. Careful. Hundreds for yeah. the thing. Doing a quick test with nitrogen. Doing a quick leak pressure test with nitrogen. Gonna soap bubble all these joints. And of course we're gonna extend it out for the next person that has to work on this. Hopefully there is not a next person, but just in case we look good, we are ready for evacuation. <laughs> Right at 300 microns, it is now time to do a decay test and a valve off on our core removal tools and just 
monitor the rise after 10 minutes. Okay, past decay test. Now I'm gonna valve off my micron gauge and we're gonna break vacuum. And we've got our refrigerant on the scale. We're gonna purge the air out right here until the liquid comes out. And we've got this not threaded on all the way. I'm gonna open up a little bit, purge the air out of this. And let's zero out our scale. And we're gonna be putting in 3.2 pounds. So now we're breaking vacuum. And I'm metering this in, because I don't wanna wash a bunch of oil away as there's no valve cores to kind of slow it down. All right, we've got three pounds and a quarter. So let's start her up. And give it about 10, 15 minutes to run before we dial in the charge. Initial reading, suction pressure is looking a lot better, but we do need to stack up some more sub cooling in this condenser. So we're going to add uh, about three to four ounces at a time until we get our desired sub cooling. All right, the unit shut off. These are our final readings, and I am definitely happy with these readings. Our superheat. A uh, little low, but still definitely within specs, and our subcool, just a tad low, but it's close enough. Being the middle of September, this might have been my last sealed system repair this year. I hope not, but I've done about 100 of them so far this year, or this summer. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. My name is Dave, and I hope to see you on the next one.